this afternoon's seminar. She's uh, Dr. Ye Yun Han, who's, e, uh, who's a postdoctoral fellow at, here at IEMS. Uh, she's a public health nutritionist uh, who works on the social and behavioral challenges related to reducing uh, malnutrition. Uh, today, she's going to share with us her findings from her large-scale RCT in Ethiopia on engaging fathers to improve children's diet. Uh, it's a topic I'm quite looking forward to is because that's an issue I can very much relate to considering how bad my child's diet is. Uh, so over to you, Yeyun. Thank you so much um, for the introduction um, and thank you for the opportunity to um, um, share my study. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, can you see my slide? Okay. Um, so title of um, today's study is Engaging Fathers in Nutrition Education Program and the role of food vouchers to improve children's diets. Um, it was clustered randomized control trial um, by design and was conducted in Ethiopia. I'm going to talk in the order shown, below, shown here. Um, and So stunting um, is measure of impaired growth, which measures height for age Z-score below two standard deviations of the WHO child growth standard median. And it is estimated um, more than 150 million children, on, children under five are stunted. Stunting in early life, particularly in the first 1000 days from conception until the age of two, has um, short and long-term adverse consequences. Some of those consequences include poor cognition, um, poor education performances, increased risk of nutrition-related chronic diseases in adult life, and low adult wages. Um, it is estimated that stunted children earn 20% less as adults compared to non-stunted um, individuals. And, and this um, picture shows prevalence of stunting by countries. We see prevalence of stunting is um, more than 30, 40, 50% in most of the sub-Saharan African countries, above 30% in India, India, above 40% in many um, countries in Southeast Asia. So when does stunting start? and what is the pattern of stunting from birth to five years of age. Um, this graph um, is the growth, uh, shows stunting prevalence in children living in Ethiopia, y-axis showing stunting prevalence, x-axis representing children's age in month. And we see growth faltering is already present at birth, um, which indicates impaired growth start from conception. From zero to six months, when um, mothers are still breastfeeding, we, still, we see slower increase in stunting prevalence. However, from six months, um, when solid food is introduced, stunting rapidly increase until 24 months. And as we can see, um, by the time children reach, reach um, 24 months, um, average stunting prevalence is 47% um, in Ethiopia. So what are the main causes of growth faltering? The most direct causes are inadequate intake of nutrition in terms of calorie and micronutrients. Recurrent infection or chronic diseases can also cause poor nutrient intake and also absorption and utilization of nutrients. Poor hygiene practices can cause diarrhea, which cause poor absorption of nutrition. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, actually, just a couple of clarification questions. Yes. Um, if you go back to the graph. Yes. Stunting is defined um, on the basis of Z scores. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, so, if the prevalence changes from 2011, uh, from 2000 to 2011, mm -hmm. could it be because the distribution? has changed? Distribution, so lower tail a, of the... Yeah. Um, uh, 
I haven't checked whether um, only the lower, uh, this um, change in stunting is driven by particularly the lower tail of the um, HHC score or whether the entire distribution is shifted um, to, to, to right. But um, yeah, I, I would um, okay, check. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. Related to that, a second question. Mm -hmm. On the previous slide, mm -hmm. you had a number of countries that were gray, which have no available data. Yeah, many yeah. of these are first world countries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of Europe, yeah. Australia, yeah, Canada. Yeah, yeah. Is it because uh, there's no stunting in these countries, or is it because um, this is actually? Um, um, I think these countries, um, because stunting is not a, a major problem in these countries, so I think it was not um, um, focused on this map. No, um, this, this is based on the DHS, um, so that the. Uh, DHS, uh, DHS yeah. is not available, maybe that's why. So I don't know the full form of DHS, I'm sorry. Uh, it's a demographic and health survey, and this um, surveys are conducted in um, developing countries mainly um, to measure child growth and um, and also um, um, other, other social demographic factors. And so if you were understand. to include Europe and yeah. Canada and Australia, then actually mm -hmm. the prevalence of stunting would be even higher. Mm. Right, because the median would be different. Um, I guess it's so an this... even even lower, right? Because uh, these countries are the stunting prevalence is pretty low. So that's right. And so the amount of stunting in you know what counts as stunting changes right. mm. towards the healthy yeah. side. Yeah. And so the prevalence of stunting in Ethiopia would be even higher. Right. Compared to this country, yes. Right. But um, the stunting is the measure of. Stunting HAC score um, is um, the they are compared to the WHO uh, standard growth um, mark. So even if all 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 these children, regardless of where they are, they would be compared to this same population. So the HAC score would not change regardless of um, the population. We thank you. So um, yeah, so in this study, we focus on improving children's diet. Um, and when solid foods are introduced um, between um, at, at six months and up to 24 months, uh, which is also called infant and young child feeding practices. So here, there are three main um, WHO standard indicators. Indicators. First is minimum diet diversity, the percent, which measures percentage of children who receive food from at least four food groups, um, which is proxy for measuring um, micronutrient, uh, adequate mi micronutrient intake. And in Ethiopia, only 12.6% of the children met the standard. Second um, standard is minimum meal frequency which measures percentage of children who receive minimum number of meals specific to the age and breastfeeding status. Um, and this is proxy for measuring um, adequate caloric intake. And in Ethiopia, 45% of the children um, met the standard. Minimum acceptable diet is combination of the previous two standard, uh, which measures percentage of children who meet both minimum diet diversity and minimum meal frequency standard and only 7% of the children met this standard. So um, to find out um, what is what the main barriers to improve diet is, uh, we looked at wider literature and we also did um, formative studies and we identified um, three main barriers to improve feeding practices during this period. First, um, mothers lack knowledge of what should be fed. For example, um, mothers strongly believed babies should not be fed animal sourced food, especially meat. They were very concerned about um, babies would not digest uh, foods from meat. And so they would provide a very thin gruel um, with only with small uh, number of food groups from cereal and vegetables. Second, mothers lack decision power to purchase nutritious but more expensive food items. 
um, fathers were usually the ones earning the money and it was common for mothers to ask fathers money for groceries. Um, mothers also were overburdened with childcare and household labor. And so cooking nutritious food appropriate for children, uh, which requires additional task and time was a burden for them. Third, um, income constraint, GDP per capita is $700, um, which is uh, about $2 per day. So nutritious food that was commonly lacking in children's diet were meat, dairy, and egg, which uh, were um, relatively more expensive to purchase um, compared to other foods. Um, so these were consumed less readily than the other food groups. Other foods. So previous studies show behavior um, nutrition education or behavior change communication programs um, change health behaviors. Um, however, most BCC programs in developing countries mainly target mothers. Um, in developing country setting where gender inequality is prevalent, men have greater decision power over household resources. And so changing women's attitude alone about child nutrition may not be sufficient to improve children's diet. So would engaging fathers improve children's diet? And also would engaging fathers improve children's diet when, even when households receive food voucher? Um, previous studies that looked at father's involvement show mixed results. Um, each study um, has different definition of father's involvement. Um, looking at um, the studies that show positive results, positive uh, relationship with father's involvement and health outcomes, um, we see men accompanying services, um, prenatal services, like um, going to ultrasound services with mothers, um, positively influence mother's health service utilization. We also see mothers um, perceive social support uh, from the fathers, um, positively influence depressive symptoms, so decreased difference, um, depressive symptoms. So also I, couple coming. Mm -hmm. I have a, a clarification question for, okay. uh, yes. for you previous slide mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so i think i think it's interesting that um uh, yeah this page mm -hmm. that men have mm -hmm. great power over household resources so so yeah. what by power i mean does it mean that by by budgeting i mean how much to spend on certain items or that that man is the main uh, income contributor and therefore they their effort mm -hmm. to the upper bound of the budget, but the mom will be responsible of how to how to spend the money. Mm -hmm. um, so how we how we how we measured decision power in the study was we asked for each items, for example, each food items or um, other other um, household related food um, purchases. We asked mothers, um, do you um, from the scale zero to ten who who makes decision? It, um, point your finger finger to the ruler. Zero if um, you alone make decision. Ten um, if fathers alone make decision, and five um, if you jointly make decision. So it's uh, it measures um, who has more um, who who has more decision power on the individual. Um, household related purchases. So this survey is conducted in uh, many developing countries, not, not specifically to uh, this specific country? This survey? Yeah, this survey, because as you mentioned that you, you asked the, the mothers to raise mm -hmm, mm -hmm, in uh, what item, I mean, who will make a decision in, um, in uh, spending money on different yeah. items? Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, so this survey is um is conducted in many countries, not not the not only this country, right? Yeah. So, um, not exactly the same survey tools, but um, 
other other studies also measured um, decision power um, in similar ways like this. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and couple communication also um, was pos positively associated with contraception use. Um, paternal nutrition education, which was an RCT, um, giving fathers um, um, education about um, importance of exclusive breastfeeding, increased um, six months exclusive breastfeeding rate, and men's nutrition knowledge also was associated with higher um, child dietary um, qual diet quality. However, we also find um, um, negative influence of fathers' um, involvement. Um, in, in these two studies, um, fathers' involvement uh, were measured by uh, were measured as decision power, and increase in um, fathers' decision power was associated with um, low use of contraception use. Um, and also men's decision power was also associated with um, lower utilization of antenatal services. And there is no intervention studies to causally assess the impact of father involvement in child nutrition. So um, this is the map of the study site, um, Ijere. And this um, study site is approximately 60 kilometer west of Addis Ababa. And land size is approximately 300 kilometer square. Um, there were 30 cattle A's, um, which would be equivalent to um, district. Um, um, within this 30 cattle A's, um, three were urban, 27 were rural cattle A's. And in this 30 cattle A's, for, there were 487 villages. Um, and these villages were the unit of randomization. Um, this is our um, experimental design. Um, women aged 18 to 40 with children between four to 20 months um, were eligible to participate in the study. And spouses of the participating women were also um, eligible to participate. There were a total of 875 mother, father, child groups. And um, 105 villages were um, randomized into five treatments and one control group. Uh, treatment one, we provided maternal VCC. Treatment two, we provided maternal VCC and paternal VCC. Treatment three, food voucher. Treatment four, maternal VCC plus voucher. Treatment five, maternal VCC, paternal VCC and voucher. Six, um, and, and control group. And in the food voucher receiving households, ownership of the food voucher was individually randomized between men and women. However, in, in the study, we're going to focus on um, first um, for uh, treatment one, two, four, five, and the control group. And we excluded 128 women who does not live with partners. Um, could you mm -hmm. talk about why you made these five specific mm -hmm. choices, not, you know, paternal BCC and voucher, for example, is missing. Uh, oh, why we, we, um, we included this intervention as treatment arms. Well, I okay. mean, you've got three factors, right? Maternal BCC, mm -hmm, paternal mm -hmm, BCC, mm -hmm, and voucher. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. should lead to a certain number of combinations out of which you've chosen five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we have a separate paper uh, we're currently working on, which looks at um, maternal BCC um, and voucher uh, and maternal BCC plus voucher. So here we wanted to compare um, whether um, providing maternal BCC and food voucher together um, um, has a synergistic effect compared to maternal BCC and voucher alone. So we wanted to um, see whether there's um, um, not only additional effect, but um, there's complementarity 
between maternal BCC and voucher. No, I understand that. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that, right? Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But how come you didn't have a paternal BCC and voucher as well? Mm -hmm. When you design the study, right? There yeah, are seven yeah. possible combinations mm -hmm. and you appear to have chosen five out of them. Yeah. And I'm um, just curious about the thinking. I did not mean to have this effect. Mother are the ones who, um, mothers are the ones who um, are responsible for cooking children's diets. Oh. I'm sorry, oh. Yeah, what happened was you froze for about a minute. And oh, okay. So we missed the beginning of your answer. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, mothers are the ones um, who's taking care of their children in this setting. Um, and they are the one cooking um, improved um, um, food for their children. So we provided maternal BCC um, um, mainly um, in four of the arms because um, just providing uh, nutrition knowledge to fathers, they are the, not, not the ones who's um, cooking for the children. So it made sense, um, mother, um, if we provide a paternal BCC, it should be addi in addition to maternal BCC. Um, so that's why we have um, paternal BCC always in addition um, to maternal BCC. Um, and we also wanted to, and, um, food voucher um, where uh, we also wanted to know um, pater whether paternal BCC um, is, um, whether um, providing paternal BCC is, is, is important if um, we pr also provide food voucher. So food um, even if the affordability constraints are reduced, would additional help of fathers um, be useful? So that's why um, the combination were chosen. Thanks. I see. Like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I'm going to have to leave in 15 minutes and I'm really sorry. Oh, okay. But that I want to ask a question that maybe you're going to yeah. answer later, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is that you can never really pinpoint the effect of the paternal BCC then, right? It's always the joint effect of the paternal BCC mm -hmm. and something mm -hmm. else. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so the interventions, um, maternal BCC, uh, the first intervention were maternal BCC, and we provided um, four, there were several different components to this uh, BCC program. We provided uh, nutrition knowledge. Uh, we also provided role play and discussion to uh, reinforce the knowledge they learned. We also provided recipe and cooking demonstration for, for the mothers to apply the knowledge they learned into practice and self-monitoring booklet to take home. And as you can see, um, um, and it was weekly group sessions, hour long group sessions uh, for the duration of four months. So a total of 16 sessions. Um, and as you can see, two third of the um, sessions were nutrition knowledge sessions. And we had about one third on role play discussions and recipe cooking demonstrations. So it was a very interactive um, BCC. Um, program. We also, um, paternal BCC sessions, um, we had nutrition knowledge, but what we also had were um, the sessions to um, encourage uh, more gender equal household dynamics. So knowledge on gender roles, power relations and task chore distribution um, and role play and discussion sessions. Um, fathers BCC was a little shorter um, than the mother. It was a total of 12 sessions. And we included um, nutrition, half, half of the sessions were on nutrition knowledge, half were dedicated um, on um, topics around gender roles. We also provided food voucher. Um, the food vouchers were uh, provided monthly, um, it was worth 15 around 15 percent of the month monthly income, and it was equivalent to ten dollars per month. 
and it was delivered for entire intervention period for uh, four, four of the months. It was redeemable at nearby markets for purchasing a wide range of food items and it was non-transferable to other households and no rollovers across month. So each voucher um, had a blue colored stamp to prevent fake vouchers and all household identification number to be matched with household IDs to prevent transfers. And we also recorded each food voucher purchase. We used um, EJRS census data um, to identify eligible households for the study. Um, and EJRS census data were um, collected in 2016, 2016. And we surveyed around 22,000 households. And we used this survey um, to identify eligible households. We collected baseline and follow-up survey. We collected voucher purchase record and also um, data on BCC attendance. So each um, BCC um, sessions, we have individual um, record of attendance. After the follow-up survey, we also did conducted a qualitative interview and we interviewed 30 mother-father pairs um, to understand um, the intervention um, more in depth. Um, primary outcomes, um, first stage outcomes were BCC session attendance, um, mother and father's nutrition knowledge. Our primary outcomes were child diet quality um, and uh, it was measured by child dietary diversity score. So the, the foods um, children consumed in the past 24 hours were grouped into seven food groups and we some the number of food groups consumed in the past 24 hours. Um, and other measures were minimum acceptable diet, timely introduction of solely food, and meal frequency. Um, we also measured um, child growth um, as a secondary outcome, um, height for HC score and stunting, weight for height Z score and wasting. And this is a scale I um, briefly described um, previously. And we asked 17 questions on um, household purchases, um, including food and um, other health or clothing um, related purchases. And zero uh, mothers would point their fingers, zero husband decide, um, 10 wife decides alone, and five would be um, joint decision making. And we would sum up uh, the 17 questions um, to have the total score. And estimation strategy, we estimate three effects um, of treatment using the following um, specification, where YIJ is individual I and village J, and we had dummy variable for treatment groups, maternal BCC, maternal and paternal BCC, maternal BCC and voucher, maternal and paternal and food voucher um, group. And we controlled X in, um, in X, we controlled for individual characteristics, including baseline outcome, um, mother, child, and household characteristics. We also controlled for um, area Kerala um, characteristics. To um, compare the treatment arms, um, we, we used F test. And this is um, the baseline characteristics. Um, we looked at uh, maternal, paternal, and child um, characteristics. And uh, we looked at mother's nutrition knowledge, married, marital status, age, number of school years, and current, whether they currently work. And we see about 50% of, of the mothers um, were involved in some form of um, work. Um, um, income earning activities. Um, and this include um, working in other household uh, doing domestic work. Um, and we also measured father's nutrition knowledge, age, number of school years, and work status. Um, and we, we can see that um, as with as in other developing countries, um, fathers had um, longer um, number of school years compared to the mothers. Um, 
child, um, we looked at eligible child's age, male, eligible child's birth old order. And all, all of these characteristics were similar across arms and control groups were balanced. Um, we also look at household um, characteristics, household size, uh, religion, race, whether they live in rural or urban, hand washing place. Um, and we also looked at um, child feeding practices, um, child dietary diversity score, uh, which was um, average 2.7 um, out of seven. Um, and these characteristics were also balanced. Um, maternal BCC and paternal BCC attendance was uh, were 75% and 65% on average. And this was similar between treatment arms. Mother, father, and child attrition were 7%. So mother attrition was 7%. Uh, father attrition was um, around average 7%. And child attrition was 15% on average. So child attrition um, means um, fa um, failure to measure um, anthropometry data. Um, partially because um, when, when the, at the time of measurement, um, mother would um, come without the father. So there is uh, some attrition at the follow-up. So now to results. Um, first, we look at our primary outcome of interest, mother and father's knowledge. Y-axis show coefficient of the treatment arms compared to the control and x-axis show treatment groups, uh, maternal BCC, maternal and paternal BCC, maternal BCC and voucher, maternal and paternal BCC and voucher group. And um, in control, looking at control group mean, we see uh, mother knowledge score was 69% and father's knowledge score um, is 62%. However, um, it's um, important to note that um, mother knowledge score and father's knowledge score is not directly comparable as test questions were different. Um, mother's BCC was heavily emphasized on nutrition knowledge, um, but father's um, BCC was half nutrition knowledge and half gender roles. So we test, uh, the test um, measures were different. Um, looking at mother's knowledge, we find um, nutrition knowledge significantly improves um, for mothers in all treatment groups, as, ex as expected, by 5% to 7%, as all treatment groups received maternal BCC. Looking at father's knowledge, we find the groups that receive paternal BCC, T2 and T4, increase father's knowledge significantly compared to the control by um, about 8%. Group that does not, um, does not receive paternal BCC, T1 and T3 also show increase in father's knowledge, um, indicating spillover of knowledge from BCC attending mothers to fathers not attending BCC. And the difference between T3 and T4 um, is significant at the 5% level. Next, we look at child dietary diversity score, indicator of child's diet quality. Y-axis show um, the coefficient of CDDS score between uh, CDDS score. And as we can see in the control group mean, um, 3.2 um, um, mean CDDS is 3.2, and four is the minimum um, CDDS recommended by WHO. And we see maternal BCC and maternal and paternal BCC um, and maternal BCC and voucher increase CDDS significantly compared to control group. This is equivalent to 13 percentage point, 20 percentage point, 23 percentage point increase compared to control. However, the group that receive all three, maternal and paternal BCC and voucher, show smaller, stati statistically not significant increase, increasing 10 percentage points. Um, and the difference between T3 and T4 is statistically significant. And this is the regression table. 
Um, and, and next we look at IYCF indicators and we see um, similar patterns in minimum acceptable diet. Um, only 16% of the children meet minimum acceptable diet standard, uh, which is combination of the first two standard, uh, minimum diet diversity and minimum meal frequency. And we find that um, the increase, um, this increase in T1, T2, and T3 uh, by 14%, 19%, and 13%. However, a smaller increase in T4. So to understand um, this, um, we look at child's consumption by individual food groups. So these, these are the seven food groups um, that is calculated, uh, that is used to calculate child dietary diversity score. First one is um, cereals, green roots and tubers, legumes and nuts, dairy products, meat, eggs, vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables, other fruits and vegetables. And these four, four food groups were the food groups that, was heavily, that were heavily emphasized during the BCC. Looking at the control group mean, we see um, cereals and other fruits and vegetables are the ones that are most um, consumed um, on a daily basis. However, the food group that is heavily emphasized um, during BCC um, show is the food group that um, show, show lower consumption. And we see the increase in CDDS in T2 and T3 is driven by um, the food groups that was heavily emphasized during BCC. However, in T4, meat is the only food group that consumption increased. And to understand this further, uh, we look at household decision um, on food purchases. So these um, all food combined score is um, combi combining the score, combining the food, only the food decision, decisions about on the food items. And we find that in control group mean, um, the mean, con mean score um, is seven, which means um, um, mothers perceive themselves as having greater decision power overall. And this is consistent for all food groups except for meat. So the, the score for meat is three, which is lower than five. So a mother perceived father has um, greater decision power on meat purchases. And next we see father's, um, father's involvement or decision power increase in group that receive food voucher. Um, T3 and T4. And in T4, we see increase in decision power is driven by dairy and eggs, the BCC emphasized, um, but more expensive food group. In T3, we see increase in decision power is driven by vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables. And vitamin rich fruits and vegetables were the food group um, that was emphasized but during BCC, but was more affordable food group. In both um, T3 and T4, um, consumption did not increase in food groups, father's decision power increased, but consumption increased in food group that no, uh, had no change in the decision power. So if we look at um, this, these dairy products and eggs, if we go back one slide, we don't see um, the dis the consumption increased in this food group where father's decision power increased. And in the T3, these food groups um, where father's decision power increased um, did not increase consumption, um, but other food groups um, increased consumption. So this result suggests um, increase in father's involvement may be limiting the mother's ability to improve um, children's diet by reducing maternal decision-making autonomy. Um, yeah. So, and we also measured um, 
gender norms and um, intra-household labor, di division of intra-household labor um, and um, growth, but we, did, we didn't see uh, meaningful change, change in this um, outcomes. So summary of the results, um, paternal BCC program increased father's nutrition knowledge and CDDS improves among the maternal BCC, maternal BCC, paternal BCC, and maternal BCC food voucher group compared to the control group. However, we see smaller and insignificant increase in the group that receive all three intervention components. And to and what will be the reason? Um, how can we understand this? Um, it look and and there is a suggestive evidence that when households receive food voucher, father's decision power on food purchase increased overall. However, there is however um, food groups um, fathers involved in there was a difference between BCC fathers and non BCC fathers. Um, based on the qualitative um, interview results, um, the majority uh, we found, majority of the participants think the one with greater knowledge should make the decision. So even the tradition, fathers with traditional um, norms, they would say if in certain areas, if mothers has uh, greater decision power, uh, um, if mothers has greater knowledge, um, they would allow mothers to make decision. So um, fathers um, were more comfortable um, to allow mothers to um, have um, greater decision power if they um, perceive father, mother are the ones who's expert on that area. And because BCC, um, because non-BCC fathers um, didn't receive the BCC sessions, they would assume mother has greater nutrition knowledge. And so father's decision power uh, would not increase in the BCC emphasized food groups because um, if mothers um, feel strongly about increasing consumption, for, um, increasing purchases for emphasis, BCC emphasized food groups, um, fathers would um, um, allow mothers um, be, um, fathers would agree to that because fathers assume mother has greater knowledge. How about, however, BCC fathers um, who assume um, equal nutrition knowledge with mothers, even if mothers wanted to um, increase purchase in these uh, BCC emphasized food groups, father would um, be, um, father would assume they have equal knowledge and they would not agree to that if they don't want to. Um, and so, this is a possible um, um, possible explanation based on the qualitative and suggestive analysis, um, exploratory analysis results. And so the conclusion of the study is that interventions to improve nutrition uh, child's diet by engaging fathers need to be designed carefully and a detailed evaluation of changes in decision-making process um, when fathers are involved is ne needed. And also integration of messages on gender equal intra-household dynamics into maternal BCC program may facilitate father's behavior change. So not only um, trying to change father's gender norm, but also um, mother's gender norm as well um, to fac facilitate the changes in the household. And that's it for this um, um, presentation. And if, um, I would really appreciate it. If you have any um, feedback or questions, um, it's, uh, it would be helpful. Thanks very much, uh, Ye Yun. That, that was quite fascinating, actually, especially the uh, non-trans, what I see as non-transitivity in, 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 the, in the results. So am I right to say one broad conclusion you can draw is in the absence of um, vouchers, uh, mm -hmm. in the absence of vouchers, if it's all just about public education, then mm -hmm. paternal BCC helps, right? Because T2 yeah. is superior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But once you introduce vouchers, uh, yeah. then the effect of paternal BCC is uh, a mm -hmm. lot less 
clear, mm -hmm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even, yes. may even crowd yeah. out uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the effectiveness of yeah. internal VCC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would that be a would, would that be a legitimate conclusion? Yeah, yeah. So um, we didn't see um, statistically significant difference between um, maternal BCC versus maternal and paternal BCC. Okay. Um, however, uh, we do see um, greater effect size. Yeah, greater effect size. Um, once household um, gets food voucher, um, without even without the father um, found mother has the resources to utilize to uh, improve children's diet. So the effect of fathers, um, educating fathers um, um, is less, seems to be less important. Mm. And also fathers, um, based on the decision power, fathers seem to be um, more, um, once there's more resources in the in the household, fathers want to involve more on the decision uh, <laughs> of how to utilize that. Um, because yeah, so well, that's quite, that's quite comfortable. Yeah. it's not always yeah. the case. That more involvement by fathers is a good thing, especially, <laughs> especially yeah. if money is attached yeah. to it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so I think I think that's quite uh, interesting. Then when you I know you had you didn't cover this, but you had different variations of giving the voucher to mother, father. Did that alter this, the broad conclusions you shared with us? No, um, we didn't see any significant differences in um, child's diet um, by the ownership of the food voucher. And um, the, the, the findings from qualitative study show that um, even the ownership of the, uh, we, how we assigned ownership were, was, um, we put um, on on the uh, food voucher. We put our, the names on, and um, we um, we hoped it would um, um, encourage the owner of the food voucher to ma make decision uh, make decision. However, um, um, most couples um, said, uh, regardless of um, the ownership of the food voucher, they would be discussing together on how to use. The food voucher, so we didn't see um, the difference between um, on that. Yeah. Also, I was interested to learn more about the why you had a different program for paternal BCC to maternal BCC. Is that the common practice that you would emphasize different things, and then you would speak more about gender norms in the paternal BCC? Is that the usual um, way paternal BCCs are done? Um, yeah. So. Um, so mothers are usually the ones um, cooking food and fathers are usually the ones in the supporting role and their supporting role is not, um, can be in two ways. Uh, one way would be allow mothers to um, purchase um, nutritious food, but also to help them with household chores so that mother has the time and time to cook nutritious food. Um, and so we wanted to um, um, change um, father's um, behavior in, within the household in more gender equal way to facilitate mother's um, ability, um, mother's um, behavior change uh, in changing child's diet to help to support mothers to do that. Right. Um, however, um, it, changing um, the behavior um, for example, um, encouraging fathers to cook or encouraging fathers to clean the house, it takes a longer um, intervention to really change that behavior. It's, um, yeah. Mm. Mm. So I, I, I suppose the bottom line would be if resources are stretched, uh, mm -hmm. put them onto, you know, emphasize mm -hmm. maternal mm -hmm. uh, messages, uh, mm -hmm. messages targeted women, and you have, if you can afford Mm -hmm. uh, vouchers, combine mm -hmm. that with vouchers, uh, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really matter whether it's vouchers given to mothers or fathers, right? Mm -hmm. That, that mm -hmm. would be the yeah. policy implication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and also a, a cautionary note to aid agencies that, you know, it's not the case that more is always better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I think fathers can potentially um, influence um, in a positive way, but I think um, yeah, I think more, um, we need to understand more um, in order yeah. to, um, yeah. What, what was interesting is that once 
to me, what was interesting is that once vouchers were added on, then it didn't seem that the paternal BCC, assuming maternal BCC is a baseline, once vouchers mm. are added, it didn't seem that paternal, or it seemed to crowd out. Uh, mm. Yeah. And there's, there's yeah. a whole lot of literature about how money or mm -hmm. like, vouchers mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. proxy for money can, can crowd yeah. out yeah. certain desirable yeah. behaviors right? mm -hmm. or desirable norms. Yeah. So maybe there's, Mm -hmm. you know, this is this is in that vein, right? Yeah, uh, it's it's quite in line with other literatures. Um, when money's involved, for example, if woman um, um, gets a loan, um, fathers would um, in, would would um, try to have control over the loans and how how. So when money's involved, um, fathers tend to um, involve more um, on the decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's so interesting. So Jata, do you want to uh, chip in? I mean, this is right up your alley. I need to ask something else. I think there's another hand up as well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Sarvana's hand is up. Uh, I was just in this connection about the, so if you, we know in the literature that when uh, loans are given, like you said, to women, then mm -hmm. men they tend to get involved mm -hmm. in charge of mm -hmm. how to spend mm -hmm. the loans. Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought, so the BCC to fathers, did you and I imagine you envisioned it as a way to prevent that from you know if you are if the father is going to take charge of the cash, at mm -hmm. least he now knows what to spend the money on. What to yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so is it? I'm trying to understand. Are you saying that the fathers didn't really understand, like they learned less? Because I know when you showed the the mm -hmm. IPYF IYC mm -hmm. thing, you said mm -hmm. it's different. For fathers yeah. and mothers, they're different. But for the subset of questions that were sim that were the same, mm -hmm. do you find that fathers score lower than the mothers do? Mm. I I think that 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 would be. So if we tested, so fa um, fathers absolute. Um, if we compare um, same tests by same test, definitely fathers would have um, lower nutrition knowledge compared to mothers. Because after mothers the intervention. Would, yeah, oh. after the intervention, because um, mothers nutrition, BCC were just on nutrition knowledge and fathers were um, mixed of gender norms and nutrition knowledge. So, um, however, fathers would assume they have equal knowledge because they also receive BCC so when they are negotiating, <laughs> I, <laughs> but when they are um, discussing about the food purchase decisions, um, um, they yeah they would be less convinced um, to the mother's um, um, yeah yeah. Interesting, right? Because one yeah. one interpretation of what you mm -hmm. is that the fathers are they're like they're perverse in the sense mm -hmm. that they're like no, I know what's best, and now mm -hmm. I on to the training and I know what you learned. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. special there about yeah. Anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money on whatever mm -hmm. I do, which is perverse. But the other is maybe they just didn't understand so much. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, maybe if we just help them understand that, listen, the, mm -hmm. the wives do know more. <laughs> you, yeah. Would I'm just trying to speculate, would that have caused different effects here? So that mm. they're not really just being perverse, it's just that they're not so well informed. Mm. And they so if we, have, yeah, I think it's important, important, important point. So, so what you find mm. in is that like only BCC, um, like father knowledge level increases, that actually helps, but the father's knowledge still like increases, but still very low. Uh, but once the voucher comes in, they try to engage more like decision making. But yeah. since because they like their knowledge level is still very low, engaging in the decision, well, maybe so it's yeah, it's, it's uh, mm. so yeah. if we if their um, BCC were more focused on nutrition and they have better yeah. knowledge. Mm. Yeah, that was my uh, mm, mm, motivation mm. behind my original question about yeah. why the BCC is not. I think that could be one um, one um, possible, yeah. Hmm. I think you have another question. Yeah. It's fascinating. This is like a developing country version of uh, men's planning. <laughs> <laughs> another version I'm, of men, men screwed up everything. <laughs> and then, men assuming they know a lot when they don't. <laughs> also, oh.
And any any other questions from our audience? Yeah. Hi, if I may. Go ahead, Saramana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. No, this is uh, fascinating. I so actually on the intervention, I wanted to clarify just so I understand. So mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. say maternal and paternal BCC are the mothers and fathers going together to these training sessions or are these like sort of oh. separate sessions that are uh, yeah it was it was separate sessions um and I different see. contents yeah i see i wonder yeah. if sort of you know um them going together and as a couple yeah. sort of you know learning mm. uh and, yeah. and talking talking about nutrition that that, mm. that could have a different mm. um mm. Uh, effect yeah. the the, so, so, so one one question I wanted to ask was, um, did you collect any inf information on the siblings? So, so you know, you I think when you showed the birth order was somewhere between two and three. It seems like a lot of these kids have siblings, and I wonder whether there's any relocation going to, say, you know, if mm. fathers are thinking, oh, you know, I I, I think I should feed my my sort mm. of firstborn. Uh, more mm. or you know having whatever mm. sort of priors and and notions mm. that they may have whether there's sort of any mm. intra household relocation happening. Mm. Uh, we didn't collect information on um, detailed consumption um, information on other siblings. So we yeah, but I think that could also be um, a possible mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. No, this is super super fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. Bro just carrying on from Saravana's question, at a broader level of uh, abstraction, higher level of abstraction, I mean, it seemed like you were trying to test the effects of two things, right? Equipping mothers mm -hmm. and fathers, or fathers, with uh, nutrition knowledge, and also mm -hmm. trying to, with respect to fathers, shape views on gender norms, which is important. Mm -hmm. But do you think mm -hmm. that, you know, you were trying to do too much in this, uh, in this study? And... Mm -hmm that you know oh. right i mean if you didn't have gender not trying to shape people's attitudes on gender norms and as saravana says everybody goes for mm -hmm. mothers go for the bcc alone on focus mostly on nutrition and second the mm -hmm. uh, you know, fathers and mm -hmm. mothers go for more or less the same nutrition uh mm -hmm. bcc mm -hmm. and yeah but so yeah uh, shaping norm, gender norms might be too much of a yeah. you know, it takes a longer time yeah to, you know, intervention through so looking at other yeah looking at other um literature um shifting gender norms within um three months or four months it's um uh, very it's a challenge it, it's unlikely so um it's uh, what our findings on um intra-household labor allocation uh, we did not see any changes um and it's in line with the literature right. um um but the reason we did um, maternal mother BCC and father BCC separately was because um, we wanted the sessions to be interactive. Um, and for maternal BCC, we wanted this to be woman empowering um, yes. sessions. Yeah, so without the fathers, they would have freedom to really um, share and connect with each other. So, um, yeah, that was. Um, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that we, will, we should only yeah. design. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So that you know yeah. these interventions work. I mean, yeah. but, you know, finding doing this and finding out that sessions mm -hmm. like that do not really change, you know, gender norms mm -hmm. or power dynamics within a household. Mm -hmm. You know, those right, those right. are valuable in their own right, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah or, or, maybe or, maybe it's faster to change the husband um, on the rather own. than rather than change the gender norm. <laughs> yeah, <that's> oh. <laughs> Change the husband is a faster way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that was really good. That was uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, uh, Yeun, for doing this, and and thank you to our audience for uh, and our participants for you know all your all your questions and great contributions. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll it's it's for uh, it's five p.m. So I think I'll, I'll call this uh, seminar to a close. And again, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to Yeyun uh, and, and uh, congratulate her for a really exciting piece of uh, work, which I hope you know, will, will generate a lot more uh, output papers, discussion, uh, and, and contribute to the wider literature on gender norms, on uh, you know, tackling malnutrition in, in developing countries. Thanks very much, and uh, see, all, see all of you at the next. Uh, uh, can I ask one more question? All the best. Uh, I'm sorry, but, but I, I want to ask one more question about, I, I want to know more about the food voucher and then... Um, sure, go ahead. Yeah, so, so 
so I would so will what's the value of the food voucher? How much how much is it to the household? And then um is it what what are the ways for them to use a voucher? I mean, can they only redeem food uh, under their name or can they trade voucher with others for money? Mm. Um so uh this is a slide for the um, food voucher. So monthly vouchers were worth 15% of the monthly income, which is um, roughly $10 per month. And this was not transferable to other households. Um, as you can see from this um, food voucher um, picture, um, it, it had a stamp and it also had a ID to be matched with household ID. So um, the, the owner of the food voucher uh, would appear to um, go to the market and um, show this voucher with an ID to purchase. So it was not transferable and they, um, it was used uh, for their own consumption. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Xiao Hong, for, uh, <laughs> Xu Hong, is it? Yeah, Xu Hong for that question. Okay, thanks everyone uh, for thank joining. Thank you. Us. All the best. Bye. Bye.